Okay, so... I was at a friend of a friend's um, place last week because um, he was having a problem with his laser and uh, not a thunder laser this was a, another big uh, big industrial laser um, he was having trouble getting someone out to try and repair it so a mate of mine asked me he said, oh look, would you come and have a look at it for him? He stopped, he can't do any work because he can't get anybody out to look at it. So, as a, you know, as a favour, I went out and had a look. And, um, after I got the, he had a, a hundred watt laser and he had a 150 watt laser, a real big one. And neither of them were working. And they were out of warranty. And the company who he bought them from, who I won't mention who they were, fairly big company, um, said, oh, we can't get anybody out to you, we're, you know, because this is Tasmania, this is on an island. Uh, and they, they wanted him to pay for one of their engineers, the flight, for him to come over here and put him up in a hotel and pay him, I think, a week's blooming wage. We're talking blooming thousands just to come and have a look. So, anyway, I, I did it for, for nothing. I just, as a, as a mate, I went there and had a look. And after the, the story of uh, what was happening with the 100 watt laser, um, now this is in, in Tasmania, Australia. Um, you know, we do have to say, you know, we've got a lot of rain. Um, we do have some very hot days. And just before Christmas, we had a run of about three hot days. I think it was the end of November. And um, it got to like 38 degrees centigrade. Well, this guy had his wife operating the 100 watt laser and it stopped working. And they couldn't get it to run. The laser wouldn't fire. So, they bought a new tube off the internet because the machine was out of warranty. They thought the tube had, had gone because it wasn't lighting up, it wasn't doing anything. So uh, I got there and it was the wrong tube. The tube that, that, were, that was sent to them was for a hundred and hundred and thirty watt. Well, of course it was it was about three foot too long and it was, it was a different diameter as well so you know if you managed to get it in there you couldn't line the mirrors up to it so I said look you know let's let's have a look at it and uh, so I did some tests with it and lo and behold laser fired up of course they were amazed so I got them to you know sort of do a few test cuts and I got my hang on I'll go and get it I swear by this thing this is a Mahoney meter, anodized aluminium block here, and a meter. And what you do with this, at the end of the, where the, the end of the laser tube, you put this right at the end. You just move it around like this. Okay, so you play the laser onto this, and it'll register here in how many watts the laser's putting out. 
So I did that and found that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the laser tube. And after more, after a few more questions, I was trying to sort of get information out of them what they were doing. I got to the point where they told me, oh yeah, it's a very hot day and this is inside a workshop. And they told me that, you know, they were running the laser and it just stopped. So uh, then I informed them that the chiller or the cooler, which is exactly the same one as I got down there, the 5000, it is actually a refrigeration cooler. But when it gets overpowered and the temperature of the laser goes up to, I think it's over 30, 35, 36 degrees, it'll shut the laser down. In other words, it, it'll shut the um, power supply that supplies the laser, it'll shut it down so the controller will work and you'll be able to move the head around, but the laser is switched off. It's a protection system for the laser. Of course they were in a workshop working flat out, got to 38 degrees outside, it was over 40 inside and it overpowered the cooler. So what I suggested to them was and I told them that is what happened. That was the, you, nothing wrong with the laser at all. It was protecting itself or the chiller was protecting your laser tube. So what I said to them to do, and you know, you can all take this information on as well, is what you do, now I, I don't know, some of you may have seen my, it's over there, I'll point the camera that way and show you. Uh, there. That thing there, that's a portable air conditioner. That I have it blowing at me when it gets like 40 degrees in here. So that's what you do. You have a portable air conditioner when it gets really hot like that, like in Australia. You have that blowing cold air at your 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 air conditioning for the for the laser. So it has a um, it exists in a cooler environment. I know it's expensive to run all these air conditioners but that's what you do. You, you allow the air conditioner to be in a cooler environment so it's not going to shut your laser off because you know these uh, these chillers um, you know they work all right till it gets to around about Oh, I'd say about 35, 36 degrees C. It can cope with it. I suppose if you're running about 80% of your output on your laser, you know, do it continually cut it. It'll just about handle that. But if you take it up to like 99% output on your laser, 100 what I'm talking here, and it may trip out after an hour's cutting and you'd have to let it run and run and run and run and run till it cut till the, the cooler cut out and then you can start working again and work for another two three hours now to stop all that portable air conditioner play the cool cold air at your chiller your air conditioning chiller for your for your laser and you can work it all day no problem okay so that that is what happened with that one now the bigger laser which happened just after uh, this happened or a week or so after which made them completely dead it you'd switch the big laser on and it would just go and, and it just 
the head of the laser would just do this business. Yeah? And it and you 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 push a direction and it would go at full speed like this, you know? And it wouldn't recognize any of the the um, limit switches, it just bash straight into the side. I'm thinking, oh god, what's the matter with this? So I looked at that and looked at that and I suddenly remembered on my old laser, my old 100 watt laser, I had that happen to that one day and I don't know why it happened. And out of the blue, um, I, as I was testing to, you know, left and right and back and forth, as I was testing that, uh, I took my finger off and it continued going and I didn't want it to, to, you know, bash into anything and bust something. So I hit the emergency stop. And as I done that, bingo, everything, uh, it's, it's stopped dead. So I hit the emergency stop, bang, everything stopped dead. Lo and behold, started everything back up, Bzzz, everything was back to normal. So that's what I did to this big laser. As it was playing around and playing around, I just whacked the emergency stop, refired the thing up so the controller reconfigured itself everything was back to normal so you know there was nothing wrong with a 100 watt laser put that right as in told them what to do because it had overheated and fix the the um, big laser done it in about I suppose mucking around there for about an hour and got it all sorted all fixed and um, you know, all full of thanks and this, that and the other and had a beer.